Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I shall be sharing my thoughts on the latest episode of The Walking Dead Still Gotta Mean Something. As always there will be full spoilers included throughout this review so please don't watch any further if that will be an issue. Anyway without further ado let's begin. During this entry of The Walking Dead the scumbag Xavier Jared refers to the show's main protagonist Rick as Rick the Prick, a nickname that seems to have been concocted by the Saviour's leader Negan. Personally, I've always liked Rick since he was first introduced. Yes, over the years he's made some questionable decisions and done some pretty brutal things, or fangs. Sorry, I'll never do that again. But I've always admired The Walking Dead for not having their central character be portrayed as a clean-cut hero, instead presenting Rick as a deeply flawed individual who viewers could still manage to get behind. However, despite this, I feel like Rick's actions this episode have widely overstepped the mark, causing me to question why I'm even rooting for this guy anymore. Sure, it will probably only be a temporary thing, and next week I'm certain I'll be looking forward to seeing more of him, but for now I would say that the Rick the Prick nickname is quite apt. By the end of this entry, I found myself leaning more on the side of the saviours than Team Rick, and perhaps that's the entire point. Perhaps it was the writer's intentions to present Negan in a better light than Rick this time around, and if that's what they were going for, well, they certainly achieved it. But that doesn't stop the fact that after the credits rolled, I was overcome by this feeling that I was just really disappointed in Rick. And I think that at this moment in time, Carl would also be disappointed too. Okay, enough babbling, what exactly am I going on about? Well, against Michonne's better judgement, Rick decides that he needs to do something to take his mind off his dead son. So he sets out to hunt down the escaped saviour prisoners. On his way to their expected hideout, he runs into Morgan, who also wants to track down the prisoners because he knows what it is. You know what it is. Whatever it actually is, but we will get to talking about Crazy Morgan in a bit. Anyway, things can never be as easy as they should be, with Rick and Morgan both being knocked out by the saviours and taken to their hideout, whereby they both awaken to find themselves tied up, with Jared explaining to his fellow men that his intentions are to take Rick directly to Negan. The thing is, not all of the saviours are in agreement with Jared. Alden, the saviour who keeps talking to Maggie back at the hilltop, urged Rick to show mercy to his friends. Alden told Rick that he believed that a lot of the prisoners who left did so without really thinking about it. They didn't leave the hilltop necessarily because they wanted to run back to Negan and rejoin his army, they just left because they saw their chance to be free and took it. And to be honest, can you really blame them? I mean Maggie had already executed a prisoner in front of them, the hilltop had been subject to attack, and they had just had a crazy kid with a machine gun threatening to kill all of them. I don't imagine the majority of them really felt safe there at all, and if it were me, I would have bolted out of the door as soon as I could have. This is reflected in the dialogue between Jared and the rest of the escapees. It becomes apparent very quickly that Jared is the only one concerned with getting Rick back to Negan. The rest don't really care. In fact, some of them just suggest going somewhere else completely. I believe that Alden was right. They weren't all bad. Instead, most of them just panicked and ran in the spur of the moment. So with an oncoming herd conveniently heading into the direction of the hideout, I say conveniently because I actually thought Rick and Morgan were bluffing until a ton of walkers arrived out of nowhere, Rick tried to reason with the prisoners by giving them his word. If they let him loose, he'd allow them to live if they joined him. Jared tried his best to stop anyone cutting Rick free from his shackles, only to be quickly overwhelmed with Rick and Morgan both being set free. What occurred next was a pretty decent scene in which Rick and Morgan were fighting in tandem with the prisoners. There was even a nice little moment in which one of the saviours killed a walker coming directly for Rick and gave him a little nod. A nod to say that I'm working for you now Rick, you're the boss. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out this way as Rick and Morgan ushered the prisoners forward under the guise that they would deal with the walkers remaining at the back, only to then cowardly kill them all from behind. What the actual hell? These people had just saved Rick's life, and how does he thank them? By killing them. It was such an arsehole thing to do, and one that made me question why I'm even supposed to be wanting this guy to come out on top against Negan. Rick has killed a lot of people in the past, but none of them felt as unwarranted as this did. The prisoners wanted to join him, they weren't a threat, it just felt wrong. I remember back to the start of the season when Rick and Daryl encountered a lone saviour when they were trying to find a vehicle. Again, like this episode, Rick gave his word then, saying that they wouldn't kill the saviour if he told them what they needed to know. That time it was Daryl who was the arsehole as he killed him, and that was something that visibly disgusted Rick at the time. Yet here he was now doing the exact same thing that he was so previously against. In addition, this moment also made me think about when Gabe and Negan teamed up to escape the trailer in the big scary U. When the two reached Sanctuary, Negan spared Gabe even though he was fighting for the other side. In fact, with him being ill, Negan actually sent him to the infirmary in order for him to recover. Sure, with Negan being Negan, he probably had some ulterior motive for keeping Father Gabriel alive, but at least he kept him alive. Rick shooting the prisoners after they had helped him is the equivalent of Negan saying to Gabe after they'd reached safety, Hey, thanks for helping me out there buddy, but I'm going to have to kill you now, only to then throw him headfirst into the furnace. 
But Negan wouldn't do that, and why is that? Well, it's simple, it's because he's not Rick the Prick. I know that Rick has only just got around to reading Carl's letter this episode, but he has already read through Carl's letter to Negan back in episode 10. This in addition to having conversations with Carl before he passed in which he shared his vision for a peaceful world. How many times are we going to see Rick continuously ignore his dead son's wishes? Of course, it seems they are going to save Rick's mercy for the season finale, when he will most likely find a strength to spare Negan. But at this point, would this even be enough to redeem Rick anyway, after all the horrible shit he has done? I'm not entirely sure. Moving on from Rick to his partner in crime Morgan, as the viewer was treated to even more signs of his madness during this entry. I want to quickly mention that I am somewhat more accepting of Morgan killing the saviours than Rick, because he clearly isn't all there at the moment. However, this doesn't excuse his behaviour. Morgan once again was the victim of weird hallucinations, with his apparitions repeatedly telling him that he knows what to do. I don't really know what on earth this is referring to, nor do I know what Morgan meant when he told Carol that he was watching it happen and that he didn't do it. What didn't he do exactly? My two guesses are that this is either connected to him not killing Dwayne's mother resulting in his son dying, or he's in fact talking about his decision to spare the wolves, which in turn allowed the group of weirdos to bring down Alexandria's walls. Whatever it is, Morgan needs to find a doctor. I've made a point before in previous videos regarding how I'm not really a fan of Morgan flip-flopping from peaceful to crazy to peaceful to crazy again, but now having thought about it a bit more, I'm not sure I still agree with this statement. When we reunited with Morgan for the first time since the pilot episode in the third season, he was even crazier than he is now, with the flashback episode Here's Not Here showing the full extent of his madness. He then ran into Eastman, who seemingly cured him by talking to him and teaching him Aikido. Now I'm sorry but no one goes from strangling random people in the woods to sane just because they learnt some form of martial arts. To me, it makes sense that Morgan has broken down once again. He's been forced into situations where he has had to kill during the war, and it appears that this has triggered the crazy Morgan of old to resurface, with him now desperately fighting within himself to regain his sanity. I know it's not entirely relevant to this video, but I've seen a lot of complaints about his character on the internet, which I've also been guilty of myself, but looking into it a bit deeper, I can understand why he is struggling once again. And whilst I'm on the topic of Morgan, I want to quickly mention a couple of scenes this week featuring him which I really enjoyed. Firstly, seeing him admit to Jared that he came to find all the prisoners just to kill them was pretty dark and made me laugh out loud. There Rick was trying to negotiate his way out, and then in steps Morgan who just says, yeah you know what, I'll admit it, I wanted to kill you all. Poor Rick must have been wanting to hold his head in his hands. I also found the moment in which Morgan explained to Rick that he only saved him in the first place because his son was there to be rather poignant. Rick's line of questioning showed the viewer that he couldn't understand why Morgan would save a stranger when he had his son to care for. For all Morgan knew, Rick could have been a danger. However, Morgan's answer proved that Rick was completely missing the point. Morgan saved Rick because of his son. It's what his son would have wanted him to do, and it's the kind of thing Morgan would have wanted his son doing. Morgan was still trying to teach Dwayne how to be a good person, and leaving an injured man to die doesn't give the kid the best impression. Although this exchange between Rick and Morgan only consisted of a few lines, it had a big impact on me, and hopefully it would also have a big impact on Rick. In addition, it was great finally seeing Jared die. I've been waiting for a long time to see him bite the dust. Although I'll admit it was pretty depressing seeing Morgan proudly tell Henry about his demise, only for Henry to then realise that the act of killing could easily lead one down a path to being as unhinged as Morgan is. Don't get me wrong, I still don't really like this Henry kid, but seeing him apologise to Morgan when he was notified about Jared's death showed that he has learnt that revenge isn't the be all and end all. The last major plot point I want to talk about centres on Jadis and Negan, with Negan being held captive by the last surviving scavenger. As previously alluded to with my views on Rick, Negan came off as being the much more reasonable of the two during this episode, as he was seen apologising to Jadis for what had happened to her people. He seemed genuinely upset with what had happened, and there is no way Simon will be getting away with what he has done. He also revealed why his bat is named Lucille and why he has such an attachment to it. It doesn't really make it any less stupid in my eyes, but it's nice that non-comic book readers now know why he loves an inanimate object so much. I have to say I did think it was a bit silly that Jadis just left the gun lying around on the floor, which of course Negan managed to pick up and use to worm his way out of the tricky situation he found himself in. Jadis herself wasn't given as much to do this episode as I would have liked after her brilliant performance last time around, but her character still manages to intrigue me, and I'm glad that after hating her for so long I still currently like her. At first I actually thought the opening sequence of her in a fancy trailer was a flashback to Negan's wife walking out on him. Look, don't laugh at me, my TV isn't the greatest. Combine this with her change of clothes, and at first glance I didn't realise it was Jadis at all. I mean that trailer is a hell of a lot nicer than I expected it would be. 
It also appears Jadis has running electricity as evidenced by her lamp, so it seems the scavengers were living a much better quality life than they let on. Jadis is definitely hiding something. I mean her watch is synced to the exact time that the helicopter passes over the dump, and her attempts to gain the copter's attention makes me think she may be working for or with whatever group is responsible for it. I'm interested to see what all comes of this, and I'm now looking forward to seeing Jadis more and more with each passing week. Before I sum things up, there are a few other moments that I quickly want to run through. Once again, Tara wasn't half bad this episode. Yes, she was only in it for about a minute or so, but at least she showed that she has the brains to work out that Dwight shot her with a regular non-toxic arrow, unlike old dummy Daryl who still suggested that she might turn. Carol wasn't given an awful lot to do, however I did notice a clever little nod to Sophia when she rescued Henry in a location that resembled the exact kind of spot where Rick left her daughter back in Season 2. I also like that Negan tell the saviour at the Sanctuary Gates not to inform anyone of his arrival. It's almost like he's going on an episode of Undercover Boss attempting to find out what his people really think about him. I fear for not just Simon but also Dwight, as I'm fairly certain that it is Laura who Negan picked up in his car. Lastly, Rosita and Daryl coming face to face with Eugene at the Bullet Factory should be interesting. It's just a shame that we will have to wait until next week at least to see anything come from it. All in all, although I was certainly entertained watching this episode, I came out finding it hard to find a real reason why I should still be backing Rick to win this war. Of course, I can't forget the things that Negan has done, but Rick has done a lot of bad things too, and his actions for me this time around tipped me over the edge. In stark contrast, Negan came out appearing like the more reasonable and likeable fellow, with this perhaps being the writer's intentions, and if so, then they definitely achieve what they set out to do. However, I can't help but feel that with two episodes of the All Out War arc left to go, I really should be in a position whereby I'm wanting to cheer on Rick to victory, but as it stands, I'm not sure I'm rooting for the right guy. And whilst the creative team deserves some plaudits for taking a risk and making me feel this way, as someone who has followed Rick for eight seasons now, it's a bitter pill to swallow. So you have it, that's some of my thoughts on the latest episode of The Walking Dead. As always, please let me know your thoughts below. I want to quickly apologise for this video being late. As always, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.